Hello and welcome to this GunFoam.com tutorial video. My name is Ryan and today I'm going to show you how to use the GunFoam system to create your very own custom foam insert for your rifle or pistol. The process is simple. There's just a few key things that you need to be aware of and I'm going to walk you through them step by step. Now this is going to be really fun because at the end of this video you're going to be able to design your very own custom foam insert for your firearm. Now let's jump onto the computer and I'll show you how easy it is. Today I'm going to design an insert for a Pelican 1720 rifle case. Now this is a case that I already own so I just need to find the insert for it on the site. I'm going to go up to the main menu, hover over foam inserts, and because the 1720 is a classic series case I'm going to navigate to Pelican Classic and click on Classic. So now I'm on the Pelican Classic collection page, and you can see all the inserts for the Classic Series cases. I'm going to scroll down until I find the 1720, and you can see that there are two product listings here, one for the foam insert only, and one with the case. Now since I already have the case, I'm going to click on Foam Insert Only. Now I'm on the 1720 product page, and you'll notice I have some selections I can make here to change different options. I can easily switch between the foam insert only and the insert with the case. Again, I'm going to stick with foam only. I can also change the foam color, and if I click on these color swatches, the images will change. You can see that there's eight different colors that I can choose from for this case, but for now, I think I'm just going to stick with the gun foam red. The last option I can choose from is with laser engraving or no laser engraving. With laser engraving is going to allow me to create my own custom text as well as choose from a library of graphics that I can add to the surface of my insert after I've laid out the firearms in the case. Laser engraving is a flat fee and you can add as many items of text or graphics as you'd like. Now I'm going to leave this selected because I want to show you how to do this later. Next I'm going to scroll down to the customization section. You can see that the add laser engraving button is grayed out because I need to customize my foam insert first, so I'll go ahead and click on the customize foam button. Since this is the first time I'm entering the editor on this page, this window is going to remind me to double check my case, foam color, and laser engraving selections because the customizations that I'm about to do are only going to affect this combination. Now if I come back later and I want to change these options, I can do so. However, I'm going to have to lay out my foam again. The good news is the images that I upload to the editor will remain in my personal library and I can easily drag them right back onto the insert and I won't have to upload them again. I'm going to click on I understand and now I'll click on customize foam once more and now we're entering the foam editor. Let's go ahead and add my rifle to the foam by taking a photo. I'll click on the Upload New Item button, which brings up this screen. I have two options. I can either use the free GunFoam smartphone app, or I can take the image on my phone or camera and upload it from my computer. The benefit of using the app is that it guides you through how to take a proper image with written and video instructions. It also has some handy tools that will help you keep your phone level and steady as the app takes the photo for you, and it will guide you through how to take and record proper measurements of your firearm. When prompted, use the app to scan this QR code and your image will be uploaded to the editor. I'm going to use the app to upload the image of my rifle. The important thing to remember here is that in order to get the best results, it's critical to follow the app's instructions to get a well-lit image with no harsh shadows, hold the phone level and steady at the proper distance from the firearm, and take the time to measure the horizontal length of the firearm correctly. Because this is a rifle, I've stood on a small stepladder to obtain the correct height above the object. So I've used the app to capture my image, and now I'm going to upload it by scanning the QR code. The system has detected my smartphone, and there's my image. On this screen, I'm going to use my cursor to draw a box around the firearm for contour detection. Click Next, and now you can see the marching ants around the perimeter of my rifle. Next I need to enter the measured length and depth dimensions, as well as a name for the item. We go by the age-old saying, measure twice, cut once. These inserts are precision cut on a CNC machine and the accuracy of the measurement you provide in this step is critical for the system to scale the pocket correctly. My rifle is 36 and a quarter inches in horizontal length from the rear of the stock to the tip of the barrel, so I'll enter that here. The depth I'm inputting will correspond to the depth of the pocket in the foam, and in this case it's the depth of the handguard, which is 2 and 3 eighths inches, so I'll enter that here. Now you have some options when entering the depth. I've chosen the depth of the handguard because of aesthetics, and I don't want the rifle sitting too low in the foam. My optics and bipod will protrude above the surface of the foam, 
but the convoluted lid foam in the case will hold the rifle in place. The only situations in which you should be concerned about sinking the entire item below the foam is if you plan to use a custom lid foam that you don't want to get marked up, or if you're working on the bottom layer of a two-layer foam configuration. Finally, I'll add a title for my object and click Complete Process. Alright, so now you can see my rifle in the foam. I can click and drag to move it around, and when I stop you'll notice the white line with a green dot on the end. If I click on the dot, I can now rotate my rifle. Now because the wheels are on the left hand side of the 1720 case, that means that the handle of the case, were it to be on the screen, would appear at the bottom. This makes a difference for some users, especially rifle owners with calibrated optics, who will want their rifle to be upright with the optics side up when carrying the case by the handle. This would mean that the rifle would appear upside down in the editor, like so. For now I'm going to rotate it back, and now I'm going to add my pistol. I'll click on the Upload New Item button again, and this time I'm going to upload an image from my computer which I've already taken, so I'll click Select Photo on the right hand side. The instructions for taking a proper image and measuring your firearm are laid out here as well, so please take note before you take your photo and enter your dimensions. I'll click Select and Upload Photo, click on the image I want to upload, and now it's going to upload my photo. High resolution images may take a minute or so to upload to the system. You can crop the photo on your computer to make the file size smaller and the upload faster. And there it is. I'll draw a box around the pistol with my cursor, click next, and now I'll enter the length, depth, and title. The horizontal length of this pistol from the tip of the barrel to the rear of the grip is 7 and 3 quarter inches. The depth is relatively consistent throughout, but I've measured the grip which is 1 and 1 quarter inches. I'll add a title, click complete process, and now my pistol drops into the foam. You'll notice that it's dropped right on top of the rifle, and I'm getting two red warning dots indicating that there's a collision. The red status icon at the bottom right hand corner of the editor also displays the words layout invalid, indicating that there's an error that must be fixed before saving the insert. I'll click and drag the pistol away from the rifle and rearrange both items so that they fit without colliding with each other or the edge of the foam. The layout is now valid. You'll see that both the rifle and the pistol now appear in my personal library on the right hand side of the screen. Now you may have noticed when we started that I had already uploaded some items including the magazines for these firearms, which appear in my library. I'm going to click and drag these magazines onto the foam. I can also copy and paste multiple instances of the same item. I'll do that now for the pistol magazine. Next I'm going to show you how to add finger grips to your insert for easy removal of your items. Click on the create finger grip icon, and then click and drag finger grips in the areas where you want to grasp your items. Finger grips are meant to be drawn across items and will not generate a collision status. Click on the anchor points or type in a dimension in the box in the upper right hand corner to adjust the length of the grips. Click on the green dot to rotate a grip. A gun foam engineer will take a look at your insert before production and may slightly adjust the placement of your grips for the best user experience. This may include grip alignment, length, or enlargement depending on the item. Lastly, I'm going to show you how to create standard shape pockets like rectangles and circles. I'll click on the Create Rectangle button and draw a rectangular pocket on the foam. Edit the rectangle by clicking and dragging the anchor points, or edit the width, height, and depth of the pocket using the boxes in the upper right hand corner. Just type in the dimension and hit enter. Likewise, I'll click on the create circle icon and draw a circular pocket on the foam. Drag the anchors to alter the diameter, or type your dimensions in the boxes and hit enter. It may not be necessary to upload images of all your items depending on their shape. For example, things like ammo boxes can be measured and fit into a rectangular pocket, and things like batteries can be added using circles. Before we finish up this insert, I want to address a couple common concerns. The first is, how do I get that floating scope area that you mentioned in some of your other videos? If your rifle has a scope, in addition to checking the placement and alignment of the grips, the gun foam engineer assigned to your insert will also create custom cradle points to secure the rifle in a floating scope area so that the foam walls will not contact the scope. Another question is, what if my rifle is too large for the foam? If you think your rifle should definitely fit in the case you're working with, double check to make sure that 1. you've measured the length of your rifle correctly, and 2. that you've entered that length dimension into the system correctly. An easy way to check the length of an item in the editor is to create a rectangle the exact length of your object and overlay it on the screen. If your rifle is off, go ahead and upload the image again. If you can verify that indeed it is correct, 
You'll need to head back to the shopping section of the site, select a larger case, and customize that insert using the larger case. And lastly, what do I do if my image comes in with shadows or the marching ants are off? I'll demonstrate what this looks like by showing you an example. I've uploaded a photo of the pistol taken in a dimly lit room that has a dark shadow around the underside. I'll drag it onto the foam, briefly replacing the correct pistol. We'll zoom in using the plus button at the bottom right hand corner of the editor. I'll also take this time to demonstrate the pan and move tool, which is the arrowed crosshair button at the top. This allows you to click and drag to pan around the foam and is helpful when zoomed in on large inserts. You can see that the contour detection tool has picked up the shadow around the pistol, thinking that it's part of the item. If you're experiencing this, you'll need to take and upload another photo. Try to increase the amount of light, but don't shine bright lights directly on the object that creates shadows. Diffuse lighting from overhead fluorescent bulbs is usually best. Make sure that the background you're using creates sufficient contrast between your object and the background. If your item can fit on a piece of white printer paper, go ahead and use that if your firearm is dark in color. For larger items, you can get larger paper or put multiple pieces of paper together. The right combination of even lighting and proper contrast should fix this problem. Alright, I'm going to have one last look at this insert and make sure that the correct pistol is in there. Looks good, I'll click save and close, and we'll head back to the shopping site. I'm back on the product page and you can see there's now a preview of my foam insert. Now that I've customized my foam, I can click on the add laser engraving button and it opens up our laser engraving editor. I'll click on the add custom text button and you'll see that it adds a green text box to the editor. I'll type in my custom text, which for now will just be my name. I'm going to change the font to this one called Black Ops 1, and I'll increase the size using the slider. I can also adjust the box width to control text wrapping as well as select the alignment. I'll click and drag it to a nice spot, and there we go, looks good. Next I'll click on Add Graphic, and this loads our library of logos and graphics to choose from. It's a large library, so I'll let you scroll through them to check them out. I'm going to add the gun foam logo, so I'll just scroll back up to the top and click on it. I'll change the size to make it smaller, and then I'll drag it to an open space. I can go back and edit any of my laser items by clicking on them in the accordion menu on the right hand side. This insert is looking pretty good and I'm really happy with it, so I'm thinking I'm about done. I'll click on save and close, and now I have a preview of my laser engraving. This insert is done and ready to be added to the cart. You are well on your way to creating an amazing looking custom foam insert that you're going to be super proud of. From all of us at GunFoam.com, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. We hope it's made you excited to dial in your setup and more importantly, excited to go shooting.